please welcome the next president. turnout on what I understand was relatively short notice. He's not a pretty conservative county. Uh, absolutely. Uh, but, uh, but I tell you what, uh, somebody asked me, a reporter asked me today, why would you come to Colorado Springs? that uh, uh, it may have been Woody Allen who once said that 90% of success is showing up. And I figured if I didn't show up, I wouldn't get many votes around here. And if I did show up, I might just get uh, get something going. And kind of, uh, uh, First of all, I, I'm just thrilled to have your, your wonderful new uh, state treasurer uh, introduce us. She is a spectacular talent. You know that she's fighting the good fight each and every day. Uh, and she's an example of the kind of young leadership uh, that we're seeing here in Colorado uh, that is changing the face, not just of this state, but the entire West. Yeah, hey, you, how are you? Now, uh, I have been running for president for about 17 months now, which means there are children who have been born and are now walking and talking. I, my I can tell you that, that the gray is coming quick. Uh, so I, I, by the time uh, I'm sworn in, I will look the part. Uh, and, uh, but, you know, when, I, when I decided to run, there were a lot of people who asked, you know, why are you running this time? Why are you running so soon? And uh, some of you, I think, have heard me say this. Uh, I, I decided to run because of what Dr. King called the fierce urgency of now. Yeah. Yeah. The fierce urgency of now. Yeah. And I, if, if there was any doubt that we live in an urgent time, right. uh, I think that's been erased over the last several months. Amen. Yeah. Uh, because all across the country, people are hurting. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we have two wars going on right now. One war that we have to win against Al-Qaeda in Iraq, yes. uh, uh, Al-Qaeda in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, a war that actually has been uh, getting tougher and tougher over the last several months. Uh, and then there's a war that I believe should have never been authorized, it should have never been waged, that distracted us from the battles that we have to win. And that has now cost us hundreds of billions of dollars and thousands of lives, uh, and that I believe has not made us more safe. But it's the struggles here at home that I think are on people's minds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and you hear just heartbreaking stories. You know, families who are having to cut back on their food bill in order to fill up the gas tank. Uh, I met a teacher in South Dakota who worked on an Indian reservation, 51 years old, a brand new teacher. She had gone back to start a new career. Uh, she, she herself was, was Native American, loved the work, but the drive to the Pine Ridge Reservation was so long that it was cutting into a third of her paycheck. And she just finally couldn't afford it and had to give up uh, her life's dream of teaching on that reservation where she had grown up. Uh, I've met workers who have been laid off and are having trouble filling up the gas tank to go search for a job. And 
so all across the country, people are feeling uh, more than just anxiety. There are a lot of folks who are feeling desperation. People who are at risk of losing their home because of a, a mortgage crisis that in part occurred because of the lack of regulation of the financial markets. Um, all across the country, people don't have health care and are trying to figure out if they can stave off bankruptcy if one of their members gets sick. And so I think everybody understands that we have more at stake in this election than perhaps any election in our memory. And that we can't afford to wait. We can't wait to fix our schools. We can't wait to fix our health care system. We can't wait to put people back to work. We can't wait to solve this energy crisis that has been lingering over our heads for the last 30 years. We cannot wait to end this war in the world and the response to the world. And that is why I want to propose to the United States of America in the form of John McCain's candidacy. And we can't afford four more years of first policy. And that's why we are going to be united in the government. Uh, if you don't think that uh, the Bush policies are on the ballot, uh, just consider yeah. on the economic front. Yeah. John McCain's central economic platform is not only to renew the Bush tax cuts for wealthiest Americans, but to double down with $300 billion worth of tax breaks for corporations that don't need them and weren't even asking for them. Uh, I mean, in fact, we, we're looking at a quarter of these tax breaks going to people making $2.8 million or more. That's not a recipe for success. Look at the last eight years. And, and, and John McCain says that he surveyed the uh, Bush economic record and found that we had made great progress. Well, I tell you what, the people who are at risk of losing their home in the home foreclosure crisis don't see great progress. Right, right. The young people here in Colorado who are trying to figure out how to finance their education they don't see great progress. Those who are filling up the gas tanks and are, are wondering if they're going to be able to pay the rest of their bills, they don't see great progress. Right. Right. And so uh, we can't allow John McCain's uh, agenda to make much progress. We've got to stop it in this way. That there is a clear contrast between a candidate who was, has no plan for universal health care and one that does. The difference between a candidate who doesn't have an agenda for making college more affordable and somebody who's going to provide a $4,000 tuition credit to every student of the year in exchange for community service. There is a clear contrast on the energy front between somebody who thinks we can drill our way out of the problem or have a gas tax holiday given that would provide you a grand total of $28 in relief <laughs> and somebody who is going to be serious about finally tackling this planetary crisis that we face and is going to leave ourselves off of fossil fuel and the pension fund formula and tax greenhouse gases and invest $15 billion a year in solar and wind and biodiesel and making our cars more fuel efficient and bring a new electricity That's the agenda of the future. That's what's on the ballot in November. That's the truth. That's the truth. On the foreign policy front. On the foreign policy front, you know John McCain uh, said a, a few weeks ago, he said, you know, I don't think that uh, the length of stay getting our troops home is all that important. As long as the casualty rates are low. Now, all of us agree that the most important thing is making sure that uh, our brave young men and women who perform magnificently, that they come home safely. Nobody disputes that. But if you think that our occupation of Iraq costing 10 to 12 billion dollars a month, God. Oh, God. military families on watching their loved ones go on their third or fourth or fifth tour of duty. Yeah. The, the anti-American sentiment that continues to poison the Middle East 
Yeah. If you don't think that that is important, yeah. then you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, right. Right. Because I, I am absolutely convinced that if we are going to make ourselves safer, we have to bring our troops home in a responsible, careful, but decisive way. We have to refocus attention on our title in Afghanistan. We have to win that war. We have to use some of those resources to rebuild our infrastructure right here in America, our roads and our bridges, our ports, our sewer systems, our water lines, our levees. That's part of our security. Our economic success, putting people back to work, being able to compete with China and India, and making sure our children are educated and our schools are properly funded, that is part of our security. That is the choice that's on the ballot in November. That's why we're here tonight.